Hi, this is Rick from EssentialPhotoshopElements.com. Adobe has released a new version of Photoshop Elements, version 11. In this video, we'll look at some of the new features. Let's go over to the new elements and have a look. It has a much brighter background for panels and tools. The three edit modes have been moved to the top center of the window. You just click on them to change modes. And full edit mode is now called expert mode. The first thing I noticed was how different the toolbox looks. It has five distinct groups of tools which have labels. There's View, Select, Enhance, Draw, and Modify. The options bar for each tool is no longer at the top of the window. The tool options are now at the bottom of the window where the photo bin was. And it has a dramatic new look too. It's bigger and brighter. So what happened to the photo bin? Well, it's still there. Now you either have the photo bin or the tool options showing there, but not both at the same time. You can choose which one by clicking on these icons down here. So here's photo bin and here's tool options. And right now we have tool options selected. If I click on photo bin, it shows the currently open photos. If you have the photo bin visible and you switch tools, the tool options will replace the photo bin. So right now I have the zoom tool active. If I switch to the hand tool, you can see that the photo bin has been replaced by the tools down here. And you can only tell if there are any nested tools once you move your cursor over a tool. Let me move on to the pencil tool. And when I go into that space, you'll see that these little symbols appear in the top right of some of the tools and the tools that it does appear over are the ones that also have nested tools. The way you see those nested tools also is different. You click on them and they show up down in the tool options. So you can see I have the brush tool selected and there's also the impressionist brush and the color replacement brush which are nested in with the regular brush tool. The panels bin has changed too. Now there's only one panel at a time in that space. You can switch between panels by clicking down here. There's layers, effects, graphics, and favorites. Apparently Elements considers those the most widely used panels, so that's why they put those four there. Right now I have layers selected. The layers panel is the only one there. If I switch to effects, then it changes to the effects panel. Let me go back to layers. If I'm on layers and then I click layers again, the panels disappear completely. I can get back my layers panel just by clicking on it. If you click on the icon labeled more, you get this floating panel with all the other panels tabbed in it. To hide that, you can click on the More icon again. If you click on the little arrow next to the More icon, you see a list of all the panels. That little tiny black arrow there. If you click on one, you'll still get the tabbed floating panel, but whichever choice you made for, from the list will be active. So let me choose Color Swatches. I'll click on that. I still have all the tabbed panels in there, but color swatches is the one that's active, but I can easily access all the other ones from this floating panel. Click on more again to hide that. If you look at this list, I notice that what used to be called the undo history is now called the history panel, which is the same as the full version of Photoshop. There's also an actions panel now. Let's click on that. Elements has had the ability to use actions for a long time, but now with a panel dedicated to them, it makes it much easier. For instance, it used to be quite a chore to just load an action into Elements. Now you can just click on the side drop-down menu and choose Load Actions. And then you would just navigate to where you have the actions and once you select one, it will appear in the panel. And there's already some actions that came with Photoshop Elements 11. To play the action, you just select it from the list by clicking on it, and then click on the Play button at the top of the panel. 
I'll play the sepia toning action to show you how it works. Just click on sepia toning and then click on the play button and it goes through all the steps and in a matter of a few seconds you have this nice sepia tone. If you look in the layers panel, Elements added it on its own new layer above the background layer. I can click the eyeball off and see my original photo underneath it. That's another new feature is the eyeballs for showing the visibility of layers. In previous versions, when you clicked on an eyeball, they would disappear and turn off the layer. Now they still turn off the layer, but instead of the eyeball disappearing, it gets a red line through it to indicate that the visibility is off for that layer. And I'm going to throw that away. Also notice in the layers panel, these icons which used to be located at the bottom of the layers panel are now located at the top of the layers panel. To throw away this layer 1, I'm just going to click and drag it to the trash can icon and that gets rid of it. There's also changes to some of the tools. The Move tool allows you to right-click on your photo and activate any layer. Let me create a couple new layers um, from this background layer. Okay, so we have Background Copy, Background Copy 2, and Background Copy 3. If I have the Move tool active, I can right click on my photo and it shows me all the different layers that are available and look in the layers panel you can see that background copy 3 is currently the active layer well I can click on background copy and then that becomes my active layer I like that feature a lot the sharpen tool also has this protect detail checkbox there's this box down here called Protect Detail. That helps prevent your photo from getting too pixelated when you use the Sharpen tool on it. If I turn it off so it's not protected, and then I go over the design in her shirt, let's go one, two, three, four. Okay, so I went back and forth four times and you can see that it gets pretty distorted. I'll do undo the sharpen tool and now I'll click on protect detail and I'll do the same thing I'll go back and forth four times one two three four and you can see that it looks much better the eyedropper tool has a new option you can set it to sample only from the current layer previous versions would sample from any visible layer and you can still do that by clicking on all layers. If you just want the current layer to be sampled from, you can click that option. There's a major new feature that's been added to Refine Edge. It's called Edge Detection. So let's grab our Quick Selection tool and just make a quick selection of her blouse. And now down in the tool options I can click on Refine Edge. The new addition to the Refine Edge is this Edge Detection right here which it would be too time consuming to uh, show you an example of how that works maybe I'll do a video later but it really helps for selecting fine detail like hair or fur a great new enhancement uh, that comes from the full version of Photoshop and there's also been an upgrade to Adobe Camera Raw it has the new algorithms and, and some added controls there's uh, three new added controls. There's luminance detail, luminance contrast, and color detail. There's four new filters that have been added to Photoshop Elements 11. They all include various controls to tweak the results. They are the comic effect, which is under filter, sketch, and comic. And you can see in the preview window the type of effect it gives is kind of like um, kind of like a frame from a comic book. So I'm going to cancel out of that. There's also pen and ink, which can be found also under filter sketch. Right here. I like the results I got by cranking the detail slider all the way over to the right. 
Actually, first I clicked on gray tones and then slid the detail slider all the way to the right and brought this width slider down to about 0.5. And you get some nice detail and it does actually look like a pen and ink drawing. So I'll cancel out of that. I like the graphic novel the best. It's found under Filter Sketch again. Graphic Novel. I like the effect I got when I brought the thickness down to about 0.5. So this. And clicked OK. Now notice that I already had a background copy made, um, which is important for what I'm going to show you next. Because even though I like, I really like this black and white effect, I found that if I do the effect on a copy, then I can change the blending mode of that copy to luminance, and the color comes through from the layer below. So I'm going to undo that and undo the effect. Also new is the Lens Blur Filter. You can get to it by going to Filter, Blur, and Lens Blur. I moved the blur focal distance up to about 100, as you can see here, and I clicked invert, so it went from this to that, and then I went down to the noise control and raised it to about 15, right here. The result was this kind of blurry, grainy effect. I'll cancel out of that. Also new are some guided edits. There's four new guided edits in Photoshop Elements 11. To access them, you first have to press the Guided button, which is now right at the top of the window, right there. The first one is called High Key. It's right here. I'll click on that. It lightens up a photo, and if you use the Diffuse Glow option in Step 2, it adds kind of a soft glow. To see this effect, just place your cursor over the example to see the before and after. The next new guided effect is low key. As the name indicates, it's the opposite of high key and produces a dark result. And go to low key. And again, we can roll over the example they gave to see what the photo looked like before and what it looks like with low key added. Cancel that. Another guided added effect for Photoshop Elements 11 is called tilt shift right here. This effect lets you decide what to keep in focus and it blurs everything else. If you look at the example of the houses, you can see that it gives the illusion that it's a photo of a toy set. Let's look at the before and after. Cancel that. And the last new guided effect is the vignette effect, which adds a black or white vignette to the outside of your photo. And you can see the example they gave. Here's before and after. Cancel out of that. And that's a quick look at the four new guided edit features. And that wraps up our tour of the new features in Photoshop Elements 11. I think a couple of things that make it a game changer are the new bigger and brighter interface. That makes it easier to see. And the addition of edge detection in the Refine Edge dialog making it easier to make complex selections. And many people are also going to like the addition of the Actions panel. So there you go. I hope uh, that gives you an idea of what you can expect from the new version of Photoshop Elements. Until next time, this is Rick saying take care.